All right, for the Australian Turf Club, it is time to continue our Everest podcast and one of Australia's, if not the world's leading jockeys, Nash Rewilla, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks, Tim. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Let's start with last year and then I want to talk about Eduardo and, of course, go back to classic legend. I know some things you want to scrub out of your memory. They wasn't the greatest memory in that race where, of course, classic legend uh, before he got to finish and win the race. But let's start with Behemoth. What did you make of last year? Um, yeah, look, well, look, obviously he was uh, a former horse coming up from Melbourne, from New, uh, from South Australia, obviously. But, um, you know, he, I think he'd, from memory, he'd won his last two at group one level over sort of seven furlongs. And um, so, you know, getting into a high pressure 1,200 metre race, we were pretty bullish about his chances. And, um, you know, we drew well. Everything sort of looked like it was going to plan. And, um you know, I guess he, you know, to be honest, probably just ran a, below his best and, um, you know, he had a pretty nice run there and he sort of ran a little bit below his best and, and um, that was it. Yeah, just, just sort of uh, it was a little bit disappointing on the day. Well, Classic Legend was the, the winner and just ran out of the ground. He was a lot bigger and stronger the year on. You had him the year before and it was, it was an unlucky race for Classic Legend and yourself. Yeah, it's sort of probably one you'd definitely want to forget. Um, you know, I'd, I was very fortunate because I'd, I'd just sort of come back from me, me disqualification and um, he was one of the first headline horses I, I was able to sort of pick up, pick the ride up on. And, um, oh, look, everything, you know, the horse was sort of perfect going into the race. Everything was uh, going to the letter and... Um, just on the day, we, we just didn't get a crack at him. It was one of the, you know, like, you, you can be patient at Ramwick and, and sort of something generally happens, but it was just one of those races where um, I, was, I sort of finished up in behind him there and, and didn't really see daylight till about 100 to go. And How, all our momentum taken off us. It's a difficult race, isn't it, for, for everyone? Um, and being the actual uh, person navigating the horse, you've got the, the best sprinters the very, very best sprinters all around you, and it's over like that. Yeah, oh, look, it is. You know, it's a you know high pressure race. Um, you know, I, I, you know, in hindsight, so for instance, I'm um, classic legend that year. I, I probably had the option to sort of come out before the corner and uh, find open space, I guess. But it was going to be sort of getting into a bump and duel with one outside me and. And then being exposed to hell of a long way from home in a high pressure race. So, you know, I, I played the patient card and um, that didn't didn't come off for us. But you sort of win more group ones doing that than you, you lose them generally. Yeah, exactly. What about Eduardo? Uh, that was a fantastic win in the shorts. Just sat outside Nature Strip, then boom. He's, he's an eight year old gelding, but he's lightly raced. Yeah, he's an amazing horse, isn't he? Like, um, like you know, just very fortunate. Sort of got on him, got on him. When Joe stepped him out here um, 18 months ago, I guess it is now. And look, he was a very raw talent, you know. Um, he obviously had great form in Melbourne as a, as a young horse, but then he'd had that time off. And uh, yeah, he was just very raw, very green, um, and definitely not quite the full package, but, but I, I was sort of able to win a couple of listed group three races on him. and. He certainly showed the talent from day one, and uh, he's just a horse that Joe's been able to sort of gradually mould as he's gone along through the system, and um, now he's just an ultimate professional racehorse. Well, he, he, look, I, I'm not going to go around criticising your fellow jockeys, but it w wasn't the world's greatest ride by Rachel on Eduardo last year. He got out and bowled out in front, and it was going to be very difficult to win setting that kind of pace. Um, he's the kind of horse you need to to hold back a bit because he wants to just belt along, doesn't he? Yeah, look on Rachel's defence, that was, you know, she had a ride in a trial on him and he, they can trick her a little bit. He's, you know, he's a very fast horse, extremely fast, one of the fastest horses you'd ever ride. So, and I did jump off him 12 months ago thinking that, you know, there were doubts in my mind at that point, um, A, whether he was going to get the race and, and B, whether he had the uh, the um, 
well, just whether he was quite the full package at that point, because uh, he wasn't. He was, he was still quite green and, and, and did tend to um, do a few little things wrong. And, yeah, I just think the occasion, big day, and he's sort of gone out and done it upside down. And, but he's a type of horse now that, as I say, he's, he's come the full circle and he's the ultimate professional. And um, he has got an extremely high cruising speed, which I like to use on him. Um, he tends to draw... The sprint out of other horses, and and um, it, it's a fine line with him just getting it right so that you you've still got a you know a kick left at the end of the race. Joe Pride's pretty confident. He, he's pretty confident. Obviously, there's a lot of trainers confident in the Everest. But uh, um, what do you think? Um, well, my confidence couldn't be higher. Uh, I mean, you know, as I said. The horse just has, has never let me now, down. I've, I've missed a couple of grand finals with him through suspensions and things like that. Um, obviously, when he ran third in the autumn, I, I couldn't ride him. But, uh, you know, fortunate enough to get back on him in the Doom and 10,000. And that was a pretty pretty solidly run race too. Like, did at both ends. And I felt on that occasion he wasn't anywhere near his best he, he just sort of he, he, look he's a horse that's just shown us as he's gone along that when he's fresh and got that bounce in him he, he's just dynamic but um you know, as he gets on his prep and has a few tough runs it, it tends to take a bit of the gas out of him we're all getting a bit excited nash because the the kids are eventually going to go back to school over the next few weeks and we're going to get a, a bit of a crowd back for the everest from a jockey's point of view um how much does that increase the experience just to have people in the stands and watching on uh, yeah, it's a, just such a different feeling to what, to what it is at the moment. I mean, yeah, of course, you, you've, you know, you, these big races, they, they, they get you there with a the bounce in your step for sure. But um, once the, the big crowds come back, it's, it's just a different level of excitement. And, um, you know, the atmosphere is so much better. And, um, yeah, look, I, I think... Uh, you know, everyone's been fortunate. They've been able to follow the racing, you know, on TV and probably it's brought new people into it. But, um, you know, I'd really encourage those new players that, that have sort of got a little bit involved since um, COVID to, when, the, when, when it opens up, to, to get along and, and, and get a real feel of what racing's all about. Oh, the day at Randwick, I love it. I cannot wait. I'll sleep overnight if I have to. Now, Nash, it's, it's in your blood. You, you you grew up in Victoria. Your brother, your sister, both jockeys, of course, and other brother's a trainer. Um, you travelled the world riding racehorses. You've got the perfect insight into how good racing is in New South Wales and the tracks we have at the Australian Turf Club. Yeah, look, I, I, you know, I have. I've been very fortunate to follow, you know, some good horses around the world, um, you know, else from being one of them, you know, at a, you know, the age of about 26 or 70, sort of, uh, you know, I followed him to England and Hong Kong and obviously winning on him in Dubai. But, um, yeah, and, you know, grow, growing up in, in, the, in the BRC carnival, which is, you know, the benchmark, it's, it's been very hard to beat. But what I have seen over the past sort of 15 years in Sydney is just the way that, um, They've been able to 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 lift the keep raising the bar to to get it to be on a par, if not you know um, even probably edging ahead. I think at this stage um, over the top of Melbourne, which which you know I don't think anyone.